human trafficking involves one of three elements, fraud, force, or coercion. You just need one of those three things in order to show that someone's being trafficked, um, meaning that they have to perform a service that they're not being compensated for. The top three activities that people are trafficked into are sex trafficking, labor, and domestic servitude. Three-fourths of the world's cocoa comes from West Africa. Unfortunately, most of that chocolate and cocoa beans, most of the cocoa beans are harvested by children, basically slave labor. Interpol did a raid in co on cocoa plantations in West Africa in June of 2009 and they found 54 children of seven different nationalities working on these plantations. These kids were basically trafficked into the plantations and they worked 12 hours a day for no pay in really horrible conditions. And they also did not receive an education. Whenever you buy chocolate, you really need to look for the fair trade stamp on the chocolate. When you see a fair trade stamp, Basically, what this is telling you is that this company has been responsible in where their cocoa has been harvested. So basically, they're not using child slave labor, and they're paying their workers a fair wage to produce this cocoa. So, fair trade chocolate is going to be more expensive, but at least you know that it's not being produced by children. But trafficking in the U.S. can take many different forms. You know, it's not just like the movie Taken, where someone flies abroad and then they're kidnapped and forced into human trafficking, although that does happen. In the U.S., more of what it looks like deals with runaway teenagers. You know, runaway teenagers are typically solicited within the first 48 hours by someone to become a prostitute. So um, they are a huge target here in the U.S. to um, become domestic traffic uh, victims. What you also have is domestic labor. For example, women becoming nannies or um, maids. So oftentimes you will see um, women trapped in domestic servitude. That's another form of human trafficking. Also, um, one that's a little bit more surprising would be women in restaurants or nail salons or men working out in fields dealing with agriculture. These are all different types of scenarios of what human trafficking looks like in the U.S. So what human trafficking does not always necessarily involve is transportation. A person does not necessarily have to be moved from one place or another for the crime of human trafficking to happen. Houston is a hub city for human trafficking, mainly because of the international airports. It's also a port city, and we have the I-10 corridor. The Department of Justice says that one out of five human trafficking victims in the entire nation will actually be trafficked along the I-10 corridor. Another startling number actually comes from the National Trafficking Hotline, and that number is 1-888-3737-888. And so basically, people from all over the U.S. can call this number and report someone that they think might be trafficked. So this is a national hotline where anybody can call in if they think someone's being trafficked. Well, in 2009, one-third of the calls came from Texas, and out of that number, 58% came from Houston. So there's a statistic right there that just speaks to the volume of um, human trafficking that's going on in Houston. Sex trafficking has a lot of aspects to it. First of all, there's the domestic side, and then there's the international side. The domestic side is where women here in the U.S. are trafficked into the brothels and the spas, and, um, and they're working as prostitutes. And oftentimes, this involves underage um, teenagers, runaway teens. On the international side, what we're seeing is women from overseas, from Thailand, Vietnam, the Ukraine, Russia, uh, being transported here into the U.S. and working at these brothels. There are brothels all over Houston, and unfortunately, um, they're easy to spot, and you can walk into them, and there will be women there who, from, all, from many different countries who don't speak any English at all. And so that's a clear sign of these women being trafficked. Free the Captives is an evangelical nonprofit dedicated to working on human trafficking issues. We have a domestic and an international focus. And we have working groups where people can join in order to follow the pursuit that 
they want to take in fighting human trafficking. So our working groups right now consist of an international working group where we're working with missionaries overseas who are combating human trafficking. We have two working groups that are focused here on Houston, one on the brothels and the legislation behind it, and then two opening up a safe house uh, for runaway teens. I'm Julie Waters. I'm an attorney and I'm also a student at Dallas Theological Seminary. My passion is about fighting human trafficking. I'm also the founder of Free the Captives, an anti-human trafficking ministry located here in Houston.